My intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati and the principles of Jacobinism had not spread in the United States, see, on the Masons and the Illuminati, in the United States. On the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of this fact than I am. So he's saying, I, you don't have to tell me about the Illuminati and what they're doing in New York. I already know. Here is interesting, though. On the Masons and the Illuminati, George Washington writing said, uh, individual Freemasons of them, in other words, he's saying in this letter to the man who wrote it, I don't believe all Freemasons in the whole world are evil. I don't think all Freemasons in the whole world are bad. But I know what you're talking about when you say that there is a secret conspiracy operating out of New York and in America and throughout the world. Nobody is more truly convinced of that than I am. Of course, there's a lot of ignorant people in Freemasonry that don't know any of this. But that individuals of them may have done it. I'm going to paraphrase this because it's an old English. Washington is saying, the idea I meant to convey was that I did not believe that the lodges of Freemasons in this country had, as societies, endeavored to propagate the diabolical tenets of the first, the Illuminati, or the uh, principles, the pernicious principles of the latter, the Jacobins, if they are susceptible to separation, but that there are individuals in the Freemasonic order who may have done this, or that the founder or instruments employed to found the democratic societies of the United States, later to become known as the Democratic Party. The founder or the instruments employed to found the Democratic Party in the United States may have had these objects in mind and actually had the separation of the people from their government in view is too evident to be questioned. What he's saying is that the Democratic Party was founded by a secret society of Freemasons that have one thing and that they would wanted to do, and that is divide the people from their government. Because before, under a Republican form of government, the people had total control because they were sovereigns. Under a democratic system, when you elect a Democrat, they were already had the idea of separating the people from their government. You just elect some airhead here and send him to Washington. But what you don't know is that this person is not even allowed to run for office unless he is one of them. He's not even allowed to run for Senate or for the state or for any, any position without being a part of this thing. So if you want to run for office, you just go out and try and see how well you can run for office without being a part of the Illuminati or the Freemasonic order of things. If you don't belong to the right club, Jack, you ain't going nowhere, period. Here's a congressional report from the, the congressional hearings on steps toward British Union, again, Union, steps toward British Union, a world state, and in international strike. I'll run that back by you again. British Union, a world state. What are you talking about, a world state? You're talking about a one world order, a world state, an international war. And on page 13, this is a very interesting document. 28 pages long, but on page 13 it says, let me call your attention to the fact that on the reverse of the great seal of, of the U.S., which appears on dollar bills, you will find the exact symbol of the British Israel World Federation Movement. The symbol is also carried on literature of other organizations promoting a world government and a world religion. At the bottom of the circle surrounding the pyramid, you'll find the words Novus Ordo Seclorum. This is the new order that was advocated by Clinton Roosevelt several hundred years ago. So this is a symbol of a thing called the British-Israel World Federation. It is a connection between England and America and the Masonic orders of both and how they put this thing together. That's why, I guess, again, we say that England um, is God's kingdom, the United Kingdom. And uh, as a matter of fact, there's a very big difference. A lot of people don't know this. There's a very big difference, difference between being an English and British. British comes from a Hebrew word, Brit. In Hebrew means a contract or a covenant. And ish in Hebrew means man. Therefore, Brit-ish means the covenant man, man of the covenant. What covenant? It's the new covenant, God's covenant, covenant for a kingdom through Christianity, through God's kingdom, the united kingdom, the Brit-ish. And the Brit-ish with America are involved in something called British Israel Freemasonry and all these dopes and Washington, D.C., and these conspirators in Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, are nothing more 
the front men for a very powerful secret society is pr preparing us to accept something that's called God's kingdom. Remember, Armageddon's coming, the end of the last days, the end of the world, Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormon Church, the end of the world. You better do your homework. There's something going on here. That's why we have a 51st state, incidentally. A legal term, this country for a state is called the state of, like the state of Alabama, the state of New York, the state of Florida. State of is a legal term according to international maritime admiralty law. That's why we have a state of Israel. Israel's not a country, it's not a nation, it's called the state of Israel because it was set up as part of our federal system. It was set up in 1948 by the United States and England and it was referred to under international maritime admiralty law as the state of Israel because it is, it is an actual state of the federal system of America. So you better, you know, you better figure out why too. There's a reason for it. Here is a symbol from, taken from a Freemasonic uh, book they didn't know I had. And uh, here's the fires of revolution and trouble, anarchy, the cauldron of fire, they call it in Freemasonry, uh, the revolutionary trouble. And here's the pyramid with the Masonic. And down here you have three contingents or three factions of Freemasonry always at war with each other. You have the Pope, which is a Freemason. Incidentally, the Catholic Church is a Jewish Freemasonic movement founded in the Middle Ages in the year 325 by Constantine. It is a Jewish Freemasonic political movement. That's why the, the, the Pope wears the little yarmulke. He wears the little yarmulke with the, with the uh, cardinals. They wear the telus. All of these symbols and emblems in the Catholic Church are nothing but Jewish Freemasonry. Huh? Kabbalistic, yeah, Kabbalistic Freemasonry. Uh, you'll see, I'll, I'll give you a lot of examples of that very quickly. This is, so this represents Rome, or the Roman Freemasonic orders. And incidentally, you'll see a lot of this stuff in Godfather Three. In the movie Godfather Three, there's a lot of this stuff talking about the secret societies and the Freemasons operating in the Vatican and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, oh, incidentally, the guy who, uh, who uh, directed those shows and put them on the uh, Godfather series, uh, Francis Ford Coppola, uh, I was doing some research at the police department down at Parker Center, and in their files, they have a whole file on, uh, on um, Francis Ford Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola's father was Carmine Coppola, who was a Don in the Mafia in the city of Corleone, Italy. Huh? Corleone? That was his father. He was in, uh, his father was a Don in the Mafia in Corleone, Italy. That's how he could make such a great movie and know so much about it. Hell, his father is the, the Don in Corleone. Yeah? So, uh, anyway. Uh, incidentally, I think uh, Francis Ford Coppola is great, but I mean, he's very knowledgeable. He's put stuff together. You better figure out where he's getting all that money to make, uh, uh, you know, Apocalypse Now and all the, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and millions of dollars. Where is he getting the money from? I mean, where do these people get the money from? They're getting it from secret societies and fraternal orders that are the powers behind our government, okay? So here we got the Vatican, we got the Knights of Malta, and the King of England. They're all in there working up the fires of trouble all over the world. Here's the Pope with the yarmulke. Why, I ask you, are all of the politicians and all these world leaders all on their knees to the Pope? It's not because they're Catholic. I mean, here's the Emperor Japan, Japanese, and he's on his knees, or getting ready to. So how come these people are all on their knees to the Pope? It has nothing to do with the fact that he's Catholic. It has to do with the fact of who he represents. He represents a very powerful secret society referred to as the Knights of Malta. And in and, and in world Freemasonry, it, there is an un, there is something we call today uh, an unwritten code of ethics among the thieves. I mean, you may be the, the East Coast family and the West Coast family, but when you meet, there's a certain respect for each other. So the the Eastern nations they respect that he re represents a very powerful secret society of the West. And so it's only honorable to show respect. It doesn't mean we can't have a war, it doesn't mean we can't kill each other, but this is a state affair, so we all on our knees, and these symbols here, the stripes going over the, over the uh, shoulders, all are Masonic emblems. They always represent 
who you are in the Masonic structure of things, and we're all Freemasonry. That's why they killed the 30 pope? That's it, exactly. That's why they killed John Kennedy, too, because the pope, they were afraid. Freemasonry in this country was very much afraid that John Kennedy was going, that, well, the old Joe Kennedy was going to start a, a Catholic dynasty in America. And that's one thing they're not going to have in America is a Catholic dynasty. You can't help it once in a while a Catholic will get elected or something, but we ain't have no dynasty here. I mean, every time you turn around, Joe Kennedy had, what, 15 kids? My God, he was going to have kids galore. And he wanted to have all his sons be president, and, uh, congressman, senators, all of them. Uh, uh, Kennedy doing something every time you turn around. So somebody decided to take Kennedy out. It's interesting that Kennedy, all the stuff around Kennedy's assassination is just filled with secret societies, fraternal orders. All you need to do is see JFK and you know there's something going on here. Anyway.